Hi guys, welcome back to the We Run On Coffee podcast with Marissa and Erica. And I'm excited for this week. I was just telling Erica again, I didn't write anything down, (laughs) which is a habit that I'm trying to break. So I will start writing things down, hopefully. (laughs) But we are going to talk to you today about all of our habits, how we tangibly keep them, and just kind of ways to like kind of keep your daily routine intact. Yes, I'm really excited about this episode, you guys, because we know Marissa and I are so like organized and habit driven and goal driven. So it's right up our yes. alley. Of course. So Erica, tell me all about your week. Tell me your updates. Okay, my update goes with my what I'm drinking. So I'm going to say okay. both at once today. Okay. What I'm drinking today is water because I'm boring, but also because I have my Invisalign in. Oh, no. It's official. <laughs> It has been a journey to getting here. So I'm going to tell you guys all about my Invisalign. I know I have a lisp. I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> You'll get used not to the it. worst. My mom, I called my mom and she's like, you sound relatively normal, like more than I thought. Yeah. I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. But I do have stories. So I'm ready. As we're recording this, yesterday was Wednesday and I got my Invisalign in the morning yesterday. I go to the appointment at like, it's 8 a.m. It's like super early. And I was really nervous. First of all, I didn't know when I was going to have to get my teeth filed. We talked about this a few weeks ago. (laughs) I knew it was going to happen like at some point in the journey. Didn't know when. It was yesterday. Oh, no. (laughs) So I went in and she got me all set up. And the girl who was like the, I don't know if they're called dental hygienists at the orthodontics or not, but like the girl who was not the doctor who Mm -hmm. was just getting me ready, she was putting on all my little bumps that it clicks into and then my hooks for the rubber bands to hook onto. I got way more than I thought, first of all. I didn't know how much. I was like, oh, I'll get like a bump on each side in the back and front and like maybe two hooks on each side. I have six hooks and like, I swear, like 10 bumps. (laughs) I'm like brace face. That's crazy. It's literally crazy. I'll have to send you a picture. But yeah, so she's putting these all on and it's really weird how they do it. They like attach, they put some glue or some shit. They like attach something to your tooth and then I think they use like a blue light. Like she was pointing this stick at me that had a blue light. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To like, I don't know, do it. Whatever. She's going through and doing all the bumps. All my bumps are on. I think that was like, that seemed pretty easy. Then she was putting on the little hooks, which stick out really far. I don't know if you can see on the camera. I'll have to show you later. Uh But they're really big and they stick out. And so she was doing those and she kept having to redo them. And she's like, I'm sorry. They're just like not staying, whatever. And it was starting to really like... She had my lips stretched out, you know, and like one of those big yeah. things where they, you can see your teeth. So it was like starting to bother me because my lips are going numb and she's like just taking forever. And so finally at the end, she's like, OK, I'm really sorry. Like some of them kept popping off, but I got them uh. all on. I'm like, OK, whatever. So she teaches me how to do everything. Um, the doctor comes over and the doctor's like, hey, Erica, how are you? I'm like, I'm good. And she said, here's how this is going to go down. She tells me my plan and she's like remember when I said like we would have to file some of your teeth and I was like yeah and she's like we have to do it today and I was like no No. I was like I'm really scared she's like why are you scared like it's no big deal she works with kids so she was just really trying to like hype me up and I'm like I am just so nervous she's like I promise it'll be quick I'll do my best it shouldn't hurt let's just get it over with like this is it and I was like will we ever have to do this again She said, it's not likely that we have to do it twice. If we have overcrowding later on, like maybe, but I really don't think we'll have to do it again. I'm like, okay, I can do this. So she literally sitting next to me as a 12 year old boy and his dad just staring at me. (laughs) I'm like, okay, cool. I'm way, way more of a baby than this 12 year old next to me. And he's just chilling. But she gets out the drill thing. It's like an actual like little spinning disc. I don't know if you've ever had this done or not, but she holds it up and I'm like oh my god I can hear it and then she starts doing it and I am squirming like a little baby I'm like squirming squeezing my hands clenching my fist she's like don't move honey don't move and I am like about to cry just it didn't even hurt but it was just disgusting like it's you (laughs) know when something's like grinding and you can like it's it's hot it's like hot and you can smell the burning but then Uh also your body feels cold and shivery yeah. So that sucked. Okay. So whatever. We got it over with. She was like, one more. And she did it. She's like, wait, one more. And then she did it. She's like, okay, last one. And she did it. And it was finally done, which was annoying, but whatever. Finally, she gets done. The dental tech girl is like, okay, here's how you put in your liners. You have to, you know, click them up and it's, it's kind of hard. And so I did it and it was, first of all, way harder than I thought. Like they are so <laughs> tight. And yeah. then she was like, here's how you put on your rubber bands. 
she shows me how to do it then she takes it off and she's like here you do it and she's holding a mirror in front of my face and I'm trying to do it and the rubber bands are like that big probably Uh and my nails are huge and I could not get the rubber bands on I felt like an idiot I was like I can't (laughs) do it like because my nails are so huge I'm like I'm gonna have to cut these finally I like hook the rubber band on the top and then I stretch it down and put it around and I she's like okay you can leave whatever I got all my stuff long story short I go to leave and I look in the mirror in the bathroom and I'm like oh my god like I almost cried because I was like I look ridiculous like I wasn't expecting this but the rubber bands go in the front of my mouth I don't have them on right now so you can't tell but they literally go the front right here a circle and then right here a circle I'm showing Marissa on the camera (laughs) I'll try to post a picture if I have one because I did vlog but they go in circles and they're right in the front I did not like I just thought they'd be in the back and no one would see them I look crazy I look literally 16 with them in and so it's wild so I get home and I'm vlogging of course because I'm doing a vlog of my whole Invisalign journey so I get home and I'm talking to my camera and I feel something pop and I'm like oh I've been talking too much I already snapped a rubber band like I just got home like 20 minutes Uh after I look in the mirror the rubber bands are still there but you know what isn't there my hook the hook my entire hook popped off so I'm like okay remain calm this is really annoying she had even mentioned this girl well first of all I asked her if I could use the restroom while we were waiting for the doctor to come and she goes um yeah one second she walks over Uh, to another person that works there and was like where's the bathroom (gasps) yeah so I was like okay she must be very very new is what I concluded from that I'm just guessing but I'm like she has to be new if she doesn't even know where the bathroom is yet yeah so yeah all that to say that I think she just when she kept messing it up over and over she just maybe she didn't do it right I don't know yeah but I was a little annoyed but she had told me if these ever come off don't worry about it just stop wearing the rubber band on that side and we can fix it at your next appointment yeah however this is a this is good news of all of this the doctor had told me that at tray 19 so like at my 19th can, retainers or whatever I could be done and that is in August Ooh. that is so freaking short originally they had told me like a year to a year and a half if I keep up with it by tray 19 I could be done she said basically when we get to that point it's like August 11th or 16th something like that she's like if you like your teeth at that point we can be done and if you want to see like a little fine tuning here and there we'll keep going so that's very exciting so that's the good news guys but I'm like if my next appointment's not till August when I'm done definitely can't wait that long so yeah. I messaged them on the app. There's a super nice app for all of this stuff. So I match- messaged them and I'm like, hey, she told me to wait till my next appointment. But like I just left and that's when I'm supposed to be done. What do I do? They called me on the phone and they're like, yeah, you definitely need to come in and get that fixed. But the earliest we can get you in is next Thursday at 10 a.m. So over a week. And until then, don't wear any rubber bands at all. Like take them all out. Yeah. And I was like, OK, sounds good. I took them all out and then at that point I was like also slightly annoyed because I'm like that's one week out of very few I'm like that's gonna hopefully not set me back too much yeah I hope not but like maybe it does but only it's like it's only one week so maybe it's only one week at the end that you have to go extra because I'm like dang that's really frustrating that I just left and I can't turn around and go back and get it fixed so that was all whatever and then I go to eat lunch which first of all no one would tell no one told me that my teeth would hurt this much like Uh it absolutely sucks I had no idea Angela was like oh yeah like my I remember the day I got my braces because it hurt so bad and I was like why didn't you tell me he's like I didn't want to scare you I'm like (laughs) I was so unprepared like I've been just dying the last two days I absolutely hate it but I take out my retainers yesterday to eat lunch. It was like my first meal with having them. My teeth were so sore I could like barely chew. I was like just like swallowing my food but as I take them out another hook pops off so all that to say, I have four out of six hooks remaining in my mouth. I keep being paranoid that like more are going to fall off. I think we're good, but I have to go back next week and get all my hooks put back in. Oh, so that's no. the tea on my Invisalign story. And it's day two and I want to die. I woke up at three in the morning crying with pain and had to take ibuprofen to be able to go back to sleep. So that's how we're doing. <laughs> well, I feel like maybe this time next week. We're like, getting when we through film it. the next episode, I know. like you're just going to be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm like Gucci. the pain's gone. I hope. <laughs> And I told my mom, how bad does it suck that not only do I have to go through this, but then next week I'm going to have to put the rubber bands back in and go through that again <laughs> because oh, no. my jaw, they, I've never, I don't know, I've never really seen anyone with rubber bands in the front that I can remember, but 
I asked Angelo, like, did you have rubber bands? And he was like, yeah, but they were in the back where no one could see. And I was like, yeah, I thought that's what I was getting. He said, I think, I don't know. He's like, maybe rubber bands in the front are more rare. I have no idea. But I'm, I have to send you a picture because I look cray cray. <laughs> but yes. Okay. So that was a really long tangent, but we got the Invisalign. We're going to be okay. And then I have two more updates. I'm really excited Yay. about this one. I tried your double shampoo method. Okay. I know you've what been did asking you me. Think? I actually, I think I love it. I think that we together Yay. have unlocked the Holy Grail hair care routine. So I used, if you all listeners didn't listen to our um, self-care episode, definitely go back and listen because we gave so many tips that I'm obsessed so with. So many. And I've like kind of put them all together for a great routine. But I used the Way Detox Shampoo that I said I kind of was iffy on because yeah, it cleans yeah. so much. I used that first to like really detox everything. And then I did my purple shampoo second. And oh my gosh, I had like, I am i wasn't skeptical, but I was just like, I don't know if this is really going to do anything. Like, will I really notice? And after I did the first shampoo and then I put the purple shampoo in, it lathered so much better. I did not need that much. Like I used yeah. way too much. I was not expecting it, but it like lathered so perfectly. It's never been so good. I wash it out, use my um, conditioner, and then my hair is so soft. I think I believe I'm it. telling you I'm no I'm telling you and then next time that you do it you just have to remember like just use like use more of like the first shampoo yes. that you're using and then the second one you literally need a dollop little, like yeah, I use very little too bit much. I was like okay. sizing my whole head and my face and my shoulders with it because it was like way too much yeah but it was so good I actually highly recommend too so take more advice I think it's the holy grail method guys. I think it is you have to and I'm kind of a fan of the way shampoo now dare I say because I was kind of hating <laughs> it before but paired with that combo like it worked really really well yay so I'm glad that I helped you evolve your the shower Same. even farther <laughs> you really did I took one today and it was amazing I needed it yay. after all this teeth pain and then my final yes. update I'll make quick but heading out of town this weekend don't text on vacation <laughs> no <laughs> I um am going with Angela's family to Cleveland for like a staycation vibe and we're just spending the weekend Easter weekend doing fun things getting dinners hiking all that stuff and I'm really excited Yay. so I'll definitely so have to recap that next week yeah for sure well, I don't have very many exciting updates. That is, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I, I rambled, so I'll make up for That's us. That's okay. Way you have a way more exciting week than I have had. <laughs> so basically, this week I've just like worked. That's really it. I worked extra on um, Monday, and actually there is something, and this kind of goes into the episode, so I think I'll say it last. But okay. I'll kind of give like a what's coming up in my life. So Kyle came yesterday, and he's staying with me through oh, the weekend. Oh come on, that's a very exciting update. Of course, don't play yourself. That is so it's good. so exciting <laughs> and I've planned a date night for us tomorrow so we're gonna go to Bar Louie and we're gonna get some food <gasps> so good. They have and then drinks. we're gonna come I know I love I love Bar Louie that's where I went after I graduated that's like what I got for like graduation oh, so brunch lunch whatever I've actually it had was, it once but their drinks I were love amazing it. it's so good and their chicken sandwich it's like their fried oh. chicken sandwich it's so good I'm telling you Gee so yummy so we're gonna go there and then the n movie have you seen the movie murder mystery with jennifer aniston and uh adam sandler no i have not that one's really good but they came out with a second one oh. so we're gonna come back from dinner and we're gonna watch the movie here that's so fun oh that's so cute i love an at-home date night just yeah. as much as like a regular one it's so much fun yeah, we're kind of doing both. So, like, we're going to go out yes. to eat, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to, like, a watch combo. a movie here together. Yeah, I'm really excited. So and fun. Then, so, this one, Saturday, we're going on three apartment tours, but that's <gasps> wow. because we we scheduled them before we got approved yeah, that's for what I was gonna our say. apartment. <laughs> so, we're just going to go. So, like, we know fun. it's in the area. We didn't yeah. want to have to, like, Why cancel not? them or anything. So we're going to go on those, but the most exciting update of all is that we just signed our lease. <gasps> no way. Yes. That's so huge. Your week's been so exciting. Oh I my know. gosh. You have so, so many updates. So, that is so crazy. Yeah. So we finally have a move-in date. We have a new address. Like we know everything <gasps> wow. and like, it's so exciting. It's happening for real. I know. <gasps> and Kyle this week, he's had two phone interviews for jobs. Oh my, Kyle, good job. I know. And he has an interview, a follow-up interview next week. So That's he just did like news. a phone interview to just be like, 
The, he said it was basically just them like going over the his resume with him yeah. again. Yeah, 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 like a screening. But he has an actual interview with them next week. That's so really that's good. exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited yeah, for yeah. him. Okay. I know. Me I'll too. And I'm so excited when like I'll be able to say on the podcast, like, Kyle got a job. That's going to be a crazy day. I know. I just listened back to one of our recent episodes where you talked about the apartment and the two-story Target. And I haven't stopped thinking about the two-story Target since then. So we must go. I know. Go. We have to. <laughs> I'm so be, excited to show I wanna you. I want to go see it so bad. It's so good. I love that place so much. <laughs> wow. I'm so excited for you. And also tell us what you're drinking. Oh, yeah, my drink. Okay, so it's kind of fun. Have you ever heard of, like, the Izzy, like... I love them. They're, like, they're like juice soda yes. things, kind of. I love of. the orange one. So good. Yeah, they have a, a... I went to Costco, and I got, like, a huge pack. That's right, and yeah. I got... The it's like a mixed pack. So there's the blackberry, apple, clementine, and so mango. Good. Yes. And I like all of them. Mango's my least favorite, but mm-hmm. I think the blackberry is my favorite. Ooh, I don't know if I've tried that. I've tried wait, what was the other flavor you said? Uh apple. That's the one that I have now. I feel like I've tried the purple one and the orange one. Whatever yeah. those are. And those ones Blackberry like. and Clementine. Oh, okay. Those are the, yeah. Yes. Those are so I love good. them. They are so good. And I just have like the little cans. They're like, how many ounces? Like eight ounces. They're just the small cans that you get in like the variety pack. I wonder if they have that at Sam's Club. I need to check that out. Maybe. Probably. That's a really good pickup. I love that. Yeah. So I have a fun little drink. And then, okay, so I'll send my final update. And then I'll kind of just like take us into like the actual meat of the episode. Perfect. So this update is, so I'm going to start talking about it and we'll figure it out okay so there's this app and erica knows about it it's called mind body and it's an app that you can like schedule workout classes in you can also schedule massages you can like schedule just like different types of classes you can schedule a bunch of different stuff in it and there's like really good deals that they'll show you for different studios around you so every once in a while i'll just like pick up the app and i'm like okay like what studio has a deal around me Mm -hmm. so i found a a hot yoga studio near me and they were doing 10 days for ten dollars unlimited classes and i was like oh that sounds so fun and like i made my friends owen and mara get the (laughs) like promotion with me too so we could all go together so recently i've been going to these hot yoga classes and I love hot yoga so much. Wow. So is this I've been, your first time doing hot yoga or have you done it previously? I've done it previously. I used to do it a lot when I was like, I don't know, like a senior in high school or like maybe my first year of college. And I really liked it then. And then I just kind of like took a okay. break. But now I've like, I'm like kind of getting back into it. And I'm like, I want to like, okay, so we all know I'm a big workout girly, but I usually like lift or I like, I don't know, do stuff like that. But I think that I'm going to become a workout class girly. (laughs) I love this. I personally, I am a workout class girly, as we know. Mm -hmm. And I've just don't know why I think it's just harder for me to do an actual like routine if I go alone because I don't know how to do anything (laughs) so I've been loving the workout um, class grind but that's exciting it's a fun way to like try new things yeah and I don't know I've just been having a lot of fun like going to like these different workout classes recently and like also pairing that with outdoor workouts because it's been so nice here recently (laughs) like it was 89 degrees here yesterday. Shut up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like 50 here today. I can't wait That's to come. That's crazy. My trip's coming um, up quick to come see you. So I know. I'm, I'm ready. I know. I was literally <laughs> looking and I was like, We're like holy um, crap. <laughs> yeah. But it is currently 86 here. Wow. I, I wish that was me. That sounds awesome. But anyways, so the whole spiel is to say... I've been doing hot yoga, that's my update, but getting into the actual habits part of it, I think a really great way to like form a habit is just like look for deals around you. Like if you wanna get into like working out or you wanna get into like, I don't know, like all of these things like doing yoga or you wanna just try something new and like get into like a new routine, definitely check out the Mind Body app because I've used this for maybe like five, six years now, just like looking Whoa. around for different deals and different classes. Yeah. And I love it. It like helps me find so many different places to try. And if I'm like, oh, I really like hot yoga, but maybe I don't really like how this one's set up. I can just look for another hot yoga studio near me. That's awesome. I did not know you had it that long. That is crazy. Yeah, And I actually I love don't have, I mean, I know about the app, but I don't have it and I've never had it. Our dance studio always tells us like sign up on the Mind Body app, but I just do it on their website because it mm-hmm. works for me, but I'll definitely have to check it out. I um, You have to. I have ClassPass, which is another popular one of those 
you know, apps. And my work gives us a certain amount of credits for free each month, which is super, super nice. So I use the free credits on ClassPass. But recently, this is really sad, but my favorite teacher of Zumba started teaching on different days and I can't go to it because it conflicts with my other hip hop class. And I love both, but my other hip hop class, I find the most enjoyment, I feel like. So I stopped going to the Zumba and it's so sad. I've tried a few others since then and no teacher compares which is I've never had that problem before but like no one compares to my girl Pamela I miss her (laughs) so my points are just stacking up and they're about to expire soon so I think I'm gonna have to go get like a massage and a facial because why not and they have all of those kind of things they're definitely like a lot more points than a workout class but with the amount of free ones that I've gotten I think it was like pay $14 to get a 105 minute massage and facial I'm like okay dang that's worth that's it awesome. like with all my free points and then I'll just pay $14 to get my extra three points worth it that's crazy so, yeah, and the I, apps are great. it's yeah it's fun it's funny because like since I've been trying to like become like a workout class girly I've yeah. been thinking about signing up for class pass so we don't have to go through all of the logistics of it right now but we definitely need to talk after we're we done should. recording yeah. because I need to know how it works and I need to know yeah all the things I can also give you some good perspective on on like what plans are worth it or not because I mean I don't pay mm-hmm. for a plan so I have no idea but I know how much I would pay if it were you know like if it were paid yeah because they give you credits and then you spend your credits so it's yeah that kind of system so that's really interesting um that kind of takes me to my first one that I want to talk about Yay. which is my 10-day Perfect. challenge yeah as we know maybe if you've been listening for a few weeks uh, my boyfriend Angelo and I implemented this 10-day challenge into our lives and mm-hmm. I want to talk about how it went because I feel like we haven't talked about it at all, which is kind of weird. Yeah, we haven't. It ended a little bit ago, but we started this 10-day challenge inspired by 75 Hard, which I'll briefly explain again. If you've never heard of 75 Hard, it's a challenge where for 75 days, you do two workouts a day, one indoor, one outdoor. You follow a diet of your choice or no fast food or something like that kind of Mm -hmm. um, food challenge or food diet. You read 10 pages of a book each day you i'm blanking on the other other things like i can never remember them all i don't know there's well, so another many. one is like take a progress picture every day oh yeah i forgot about that one completely yeah so this mm. is 75 hard you do all of those things for 75 days in a row plus probably a few things we forgot and angelo and i liked the idea of this but we we're like 75 days first of all is a really long time and we Mm -hmm. have full-time jobs and we have school and we're like super busy humans so we're like let's implement a a few things that we want to do and let's try it for 10 days so yeah here's how it goes I picked up picked out what our our things were going to be which I didn't want to go overboard so we only picked a couple we had the goal of waking up between 6 and 6 30 and then mm-hmm. doing a yoga routine, like 15 to 30 minutes. And I actually have this yoga thing that I purchased, which I actually will send you the login for if you want. It's really, really nice. You can do it at home. And it's just a 10-day yoga reset is what it's called. You're meant to do it for five days, take a break on the weekend, and then do the next five days. And it's okay. by Balanced Boss, which Balanced Boss is an online course that two of the influencers I really like created, JC Marie and Chelsea Jade. And it's unrelated to the yoga. It's actually just like about how to kind of be a business woman in this climate and like that kind of thing. And I paid for the class. I loved it, whatever. And Chelsea's sister is a certified like yogi. So she came out with yoga reset. All that to say, um, wake up between six and six 30, do a 15 to 30 minute yoga flow from balanced boss. I wanted to do skincare and vitamins right in the morning. Doesn't matter what time. And then we wanted to do 10 minutes of physical touch each day because physical touch is Angelo's love language and it's Mm -hmm. not mine. And Mm so I neglect it so much. So I was like, okay, let's put that in our routine. So that was actually really fun because it's like, who's going to get a massage today? Who was going (laughs) to, we're going to cuddle on the couch, watch TV. Like it could be anything. Yeah. And then our last two were to do brush, floss and skincare and be in bed by 930. So. I'm ready to hear how it went. (laughs) So we made it really good for like five days and Uh then we fell off. And I'm going to tell you guys why. So I'm actually really surprised because it felt really good for the first few days. I mean, I was definitely tired and I think it, which is weird because we were getting in bed at 930 and we were getting up at 630, which 
should be plenty of time. But I mm-hmm. think why I was feeling so tired is because we were rushing around to cram everything into our day to make sure we were in bed by 8.59 or whatever, 9.29, whatever it was that I said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'd just lay there and then I would be stressed and then I couldn't fall asleep because I didn't get my all my shit done that day. So yeah, it kind of worked. I will say there were some days too where we just didn't wake up. And then I oh. was like beating myself up. So long story short to say about this challenge is... I really like the habits that we were trying to do and I've kept most of them, which I'm going to tell you guys how it's not exactly by doing the challenge, but it's another (laughs) way. And I've kept most of those routines because they're things we really wanted to implement. But doing it in this format, I think, made it more stressful, which is exactly my fear with the 75 hard is like that is so much stress to put on yourself to like do something exactly right. And I remember there was one night, like maybe the fourth day, I was about to get in bed and I'm like, oh my God, babe, like, hurry, hurry, hurry. You're not going to make it to bed by 9 yeah. 30 or whatever. He's like, babe, I, it's not 75 hard. It's 10 soft. Like, I can yeah. get in bed when I want to. It'll be okay. Like, it's just around 9 30. And I was beating myself up so hard to like be getting in the bed at 9 29. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. And that just defeated the purpose of the whole thing. Yeah, because it was habits that you wanted to form and then you were like, I'm not forming the habit. I'm angry. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And I was getting so defeated and so like beat up about it. I'm like, this is not the point of why we even did this. So Mm -hmm. that's why by day like five or six, we kind of fell off. It wasn't that we fell off the challenge. We were still doing these things, but we weren't doing them at the exact right times or whatever. Yeah. So we implemented a lot of it. And I will say that I have been waking up earlier in general. Like I haven't overslept. Like I used to oversleep when I was supposed to be working. And then I would have Mm. to like work later that day because I overslept in the morning and it was so like silly and frustrating. So I have implemented earlier wake ups and earlier going to bed, but we don't put so much pressure on it. And Mm -hmm. that's been really good. So that's not entirely helpful to the episode, but I did want to give everyone that update because I said I would. And that's how the 10-day challenge (laughs) went for us. It was okay, but it did help me see like not only like these things are important to me, but not so important that I'm going to be so stressed if I miss one day. Yeah. Especially like, yeah, sorry, go ahead. And like with habits, it's like you always have to like be willing to like I don't know, like try for something. And if you're yeah. like, if you're like so concrete that it's going to happen, it's not something that you can like strive for, you know? 100%. Exactly. Like yesterday, for instance, I did not take my vitamins, which is so random, but I have chewy vitamins because I think they're delicious and they're like fruit tags. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot to take them in the morning before I went to the dentist. Then I came back and I was like, I'm not taking these freaking aligners out until lunch because, you know, you can't eat anything. You have to brush your teeth right after, whatever. Mm -hmm. At lunch, I forgot. And then I was like, okay, I have to do it at dinner. At dinner, I forgot. And then by the time I got to the end of the day, my aligners were in for the night. And I was like, it is not worth taking these out to eat my Mm -hmm. two vitamins and then brush my teeth and then put them back in. So I didn't take them. And I was like, that's fine. That's okay. Like, let's not be stressed. I'm not going to die if I don't have my two gummy vitamins for one day. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, maybe I'll be better off without all the sugar. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, all that to say, like, you can't put so much pressure on your routines and habits that you make yourself like stressed or sick or worried about it because that just defeats the purpose of having the healthy habit in the first place. Yeah. Or you like start to resent the habit and you're like, don't want to do and it. Then you, yeah. And then you completely like rule it out, which is also like, I don't know. It's kind of damaging to the point. Yeah. So that's kind of how I feel like I was getting like, I mean, of course, I enjoy working out and whatever, yeah. but like I was kind of using it as like a coping mechanism. Yeah. I was like, I'm sad. I'm going to go to the gym because I have nothing better to do. Mm-hmm. But I do have things better to do. I could call a friend. I could watch an extra show. Yeah. I could read, read an extra chapter in my book. Yeah. And. I've like now I've like I took like a month off and like now I'm doing these workout classes I'm going on walks I'm going on runs and like I would make myself so stressed out that I like wasn't going to the gym because I was like oh I wanted to go on a walk you're being active shut up (laughs) like it's fine yeah I did that I did the same thing in a way where I was like oh my god I feel like such a lazy slob but I really don't want to go to my workout class I have cramps whatever it's like Mm -hmm. just go on a walk that does not cause you pain that's totally comfortable it's pretty easy it's pretty accessible it's pretty fun and not everything has to be so I don't know what social media tells you right it's like oh you have to work out five days a week and do this routine and that routine it's like you can find what works for you do what makes you feel healthy and do what makes you feel happy and feel good 
Yeah. hundred percent. And that kind of reminds me of something else I wrote down, which helped me a lot more than doing a challenge or doing something I saw online is just habit tracking in general. So Mm -hmm. I have a planner that at the bottom of the month um, spreadsheet is like, it's literally says habit tracking. It's completely blank and it has a square for each day and you can put whatever you want there. And so I've been using that for like two years, but I keep switching what the habits are and I Mm -hmm. finally found my perfect combo. So In that section of my planner, I write vitamins, wash hair, drink eight cups of water, which has been the bane of my existence right now, which is weird because I like water and I usually drink water. But yeah, um, those three things. And then I have do a workout, whatever. And so each day you can like, you know, color it in. And I use a different Mm -hmm. color for each because that's fun. And (laughs) for instance, for the vitamins or for the um, skincare one, I'll fill it in halfway if I did morning on the top half. And then I'll fill in the bottom half if I did night. So if I didn't do it all, it'll just be half the box. And if I did it all, it'll be the whole box. And so if I go one day and I forget to do night, I don't feel so bad because it's still partially filled in. I can see like, I didn't just do nothing. I did half and that's a lot and that's cool. And Mm -hmm. I think habit tracking in general, like for me, it's really exciting for me to go to my planner and be like, oh my gosh, I get to fill in all five squares today. And not all of them are four every day, like for wash my hair. I only want to do it every three days or even less. Like I don't want them to be filled in all the time. But just in general, I wrote habit tracking using a planner, using a bullet journal, using an app on your phone, et cetera. I think it's kind of gamifies it. Like it makes it really fun. Yeah. And you get to look forward to like checking that box. Same way that a checklist works in your brain. It's like when you check something off, it feels good. You get that like hit and it's like, oh my gosh. So I did I, it. <laughs> yeah, like I did something and I'm feeling good. So I would recommend if you're having trouble forming a habit that you want to form, try habit tracking. And like Mm -hmm. I said, if it stresses you out, though, like stop. That means it's not for you. And that's totally okay. But for me, I find that to be really fun. Yeah, I also think it's really important to remember that habits are things that you want to form. It shouldn't be something that sounds like a chore. It shouldn't be something that sounds like it's going to be painful. It should be something that you can find fun and that you think is genuinely going to change your life for the better. And... I feel like with a lot of habits, like some people will kind of take it to like too far and they're like, especially like with working out and like eating healthy, they Mm -hmm. have a tendency to like take it too far and you don't ever want it to be something that's detrimental. Health, like habits habits are supposed to be healthy and they're supposed to build upon the person that you already are. Yeah. And that's the thing that I run into and I'm bringing this up a lot, but it's just personal problem for me is like with social media, I really just try to adopt things I see there because I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this girl's life looks awesome. Oh, she does these habits. Let me try those habits. Maybe it'll make my life awesome. And then it's just not that simple. Like that's just not how it always works. So that's what's dangerous for me is falling into like that trap. So like Marissa said, just think about what habits you want to implement because they make you feel good. If someone Mm -hmm. online is like doing 75 hard, it doesn't mean you have to do it. (laughs) Like that is not for everyone. And it's just, I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard thing to grasp when that's what you're surrounded by all day. But listening to your body, I think is like the top, top, top priority when you're doing something. Yeah. And the top tangible thing to keep your habits and your daily routines. Yeah, exactly. I have a really fun one (laughs) really fun recommendation (laughs) um so i wrote down that it's fun to do routine like do routine research like do research about what routine or what habit you want to implement and i love exciting youtube videos yes exactly i like like i said a few weeks ago when i was getting my invisalign i literally went on tiktok and i searched invisalign accessories how are we gonna make (laughs) this fun what cute colors can we get for our cases whatever but buy exciting products products if you're able to like buy things that you're excited to try like the in the know skincare from brooklyn and bailey i watched them as youtubers Mm -hmm. they started a brand that's cool it's exciting it's fun let me buy it and that makes it more fun to do skincare routine yeah for sure and i definitely agree like uh doing like your research on like maybe even looking at other people's habits just to kind of see like things that excite you from those that Mm -hmm. you want to implement because you don't want to take their routine and make it your rule like because what works for them isn't going to work for you like I love watching all of these fitness influencers on YouTube and like just all of these different YouTubers that like film their like daily routine and I'm like well I wake up at five like I have a morning daily routine but I go to work at six so like I can't do this full two hour daily routine or morning routine that they're talking about because I have to clock in in an hour after I wake up yeah that's the that's the key is watching and consuming but 
but picking and choosing like pick and yeah, choose exactly. things from each person that you watch maybe maybe you listen to our self-care episode and you find one thing <laughs> from there like I did the double wash of the hair or the tree Love hush, like a scrub <laughs> just pick and choose little things small steps that you can take to add to your routine one thing at a time I think Absolutely. that's definitely key. And also Pinterest, like hop on Pinterest, oh, yeah. look at some inspirational photos, hop over to YouTube, watch some routine videos and just pick and choose the things that are most exciting to you to put together to make your own yeah, custom definitely. routine. That's how yeah. I would do it at least. Yeah. And another thing that I do to kind of keep myself on track with my habits is on my phone and I have an iPhone and Erica doesn't, but I'm pretty sure that you have like something really similar. So on my iPhone, I'm able to add like a widget to my home screen. And I know you have widgets as well, Mm -hmm. but I add the reminders widget so that I can like put in all of my like uh, like things that I want to get done in a day, whether it's a to-do list or it's like, oh, I really want to have a cup of like tea before bed, or I want to like read five chapters in my book before I go to bed. I can put that down and it's kind of like your habit tracking and I can just check it off and I see it disappear as I'm able to like do it. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. That and is so cute. Especially on the weekends, like I feel like my biggest routine days are my weekends. And like one thing that I always do is I cook food on Sundays because yeah. I don't want to have to cook like lunches for the week at work during the week. I just want to cook on Sunday and have lunch every day of the week like at work. I just mm-hmm. want to have it ready for me. So on Sundays, like I'll put in like, okay, I don't have this and I need to go to the grocery store for d- grocery store for this before I cook tonight. So I'll like write that down on my to-do list and then I'll be like, okay, well I need to do the dishes because the pan that I need isn't clean. So I do all of the dishes and like that just really helps me keep myself on track especially on the weekend days because I am definitely one of those people that falls victim to sitting on the couch and just watching TV all day. (laughs) That's funny. I do too. I think we all do it to some extent. I'm really Mm -hmm. glad you brought that up because for our Android girlies out there, no worries. We have widgets too. And I just looked while you were talking because I'd never thought of doing that and I didn't know that was like even an option. So I was checking to see if we have an option for that on like Samsung phones. And I use Google Keep to make lists because then it goes on my computer. It's in my Google, whatever. Same Mm -hmm. way that Apple works with like notes, it transfers to your Mac, whatever. So I use Google Keep and I just pulled it up and Google Keep has that exact same thing. Like you can just make a little checklist and check it off. So I'm going to have to implement that. I've never even thought of that before. So I'm definitely taking a wreck. That's (laughs) really cute. I also like with my by exciting prods, prod, uh, tongue twister. We cannot speak today. We cannot. Also <laughs> Invisalign and I'm like twisting my tongue and having like, I can't even say what I'm trying to say, but with buying exciting project products, my goodness, <laughs> with buying exciting products, I also wrote buy expensive products. Don't take me Ooh. the wrong way. Hear me out. But I wrote that because in my life, I've found that if I buy something expensive, for instance, Lululemon leggings or the skincare, some of the skincare I have, it's like $20 for one bottle. Why, mm-hmm. first of all, but I bought it anyways. <laughs> those things make it easier for me to implement those routines. Like putting on my $100 leggings make me excited to go on a hike because I know that they're going to with la- withstand. I'm, you're not going to see my butt crack. I'm not going to get a <laughs> hole in them. Like they are real quality things. And in my life personally, I found that when I have something expensive, even my Invisalign, these things were not cheap. This cost me like seven grand. So I know that I'm going to stay on top of my shit. I'm going to brush my teeth three times a day. I'm going to wear them 22 hours a day so I can get them done faster. And I just find that the more expensive a product is, which I know isn't for everyone, um, the more that I take care of it. Because I know I spent my hard earned money on that and it wasn't cheap. Yeah, I definitely agree. And like, it's kind of just like going back to the whole thing I feel like we were talking about earlier is like doing things that make you happier. Mm -hmm. It's investing in yourself and investing in yourself in the long run is going to turn you into a happier person. Go off. I love that. I Yeah, that's a really great way to frame it because that is so true. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. And all of these habits that we're talking about is to just build you to be the person that you want to become or help you maintain the person that you're happy with and maybe even become happier down the road if like you think that these things are going to make you happier. And just like you wouldn't buy a... I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example, but all I can think of is a car. Like you wouldn't buy a car that has a million problems right. or like in your yeah, case, the, Erica, yeah. when you looked at like the houses and stuff, you didn't want to mm-hmm. buy something that was completely run down and gross because yeah. it's an investment. 
So all these things that you want to buy for yourself to help maintain these routines, start these habits, and get those formed for everyday living, yeah. it's an investment in yourself. That's a really good point. And it reminds me of something that I didn't write down, but I've definitely done in the past that has worked for me to implement new habits and routines. Um, and it's rewarding yourself. So Mm-hmm. For instance, you could set a goal, a realistic goal. So maybe your goal, if you're going from zero, is just to work out eight times this month, okay? Mm-hmm. Twice a week or whatever. Like set a realistic goal for yourself and give yourself a reward. So if I work out eight times this month, at the end of the month, I'm going to buy a new workout set from Amazon. Maybe it's a $30 Yay. set. Maybe it's something cheap. Or maybe you say, I will buy myself a new set from Lululemon. Maybe it's $200. Mm-hmm. Like whatever works for you, set yourself a reward for completing your habit or routine. And that also makes it really, really fun. Yeah, I agree. And like these don't even have to be like monetary rewards because I'll do the same thing. I'm like, oh, if I get everything done that I need to during the day, I get to go on a walk or something. Yes, exactly. Or if I get all of my chores done by 3 p.m., I'm going to make myself like a strawberry acai drink in the kitchen that I know how to make. Yeah, like little things like that are so doable and it gives you something to look forward to. It's like I'm not doing this for nothing. You know, I'm not doing this just to do it. It's like I'm doing this because I get to have something exciting and then you'll also feel good after when you complete like whatever your goal was yeah we love little treats we love (laughs) little treats (laughs) and something else that I was kind of thinking about too is like I don't know I sometimes like have a really hard time like getting up and doing the thing yeah and I don't know if it's the whole COVID burnout of it all because that's when it got really bad for me but some days like say all that I have to do on a Sunday is go to the grocery store Mm -hmm. I will lay in bed until like 6 p.m. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to go to bed at 8, like at 9 to wake up at 5 the next day. So I need to go to the grocery store and it's 6 o'clock and I haven't started my laundry or I haven't gone to the Mm -hmm. grocery store or whatever it is. So giving yourself like those rewards for after like if you're if you need to go to the grocery store and you need to cook say if I get up and I go to the grocery store I can do this after yeah. I can do this later in the week or I can buy this thing that I really think sounds yes. yummy at the grocery store I was gonna say that that's my thing personally is if I have a really hard time with that I'll be like okay I can go to the grocery store and I'll do it and when I get there I will allow myself to buy a green goddess juice that's usually what it is for me. Like going back yeah. to the infamous green goddess, aka green goodness, but we, we don't call it that. <laughs> we um, don't, we don't talk will, about that. <laughs> yes, we don't say her name. But yeah, I will be like, okay, I have to go to the grocery store today, but if I do and I cook all my meals at home, I'll let myself get like one thing I'm excited about. And that's mm-hmm. also like, for me, that's pretty easy because it's like, oh, three bucks out of my $200 grocery bill. Fine. Like, yeah. I can add that in. Yeah. And I feel like the. I feel like the hardest part with getting habits is starting them. It is. Because you're like, I don't know where to start. Or Mm -hmm. I just like, I feel like it's going to be so much work. And I feel like you're like your treat yourself mentality or just like giving yourself that little treat is so helpful because it's like if I do start this I have a reward waiting for me whether that's from you or maybe you work out with your partner or a friend or Mm -hmm. a family member and you're like hey I'm having a really hard time starting this I need you to help me get motivated yes you can say if I get all of these things done. Can you do this for me or something like that? That's really funny you bring that up because the next thing I wrote on my list was accountability partner. Just (laughs) if you have someone in your life that's like your friend, like for instance, I could, mine could be Marissa. Mine could be Angelo, my boyfriend, like your partner. It could even be someone online. Like if you're in a Mm -hmm. Facebook group or like you're trying to make friends and reach out to people on Instagram, you could have an accountability partner in that way. And that can be someone who either goes to the gym with you. Like you said, you had your friend sign up for the yoga class and you guys went together. Like it could be something like that. It could be where they just text you and they say, hey, like, have you gotten up today? How are you doing? Like, did you remember to take your vitamins, you know, or whatever? It can be for any habit and it can be any way that you want it to look. But just having someone in your life that you can like tell your goals to and explain to them why you're doing it um, and ask them to check in on you. That can be a huge, huge help. I don't know if I've actually ever done that or not, but I could see that being super beneficial. I think I do with Angelo. We keep each other on track a lot just naturally. And it's a really nice thing to have. And maybe even not like you don't have to do it like where you're do like doing a challenge and like you're keeping yeah, each other no accountable. Way. It's just somebody to check anything. in with and just yeah. be like, hey, I did this. Aren't you so proud? And they could be exactly. like, yeah, you did it. Yes, <laughs> it's not only accountability, it's support too. Yeah, That's for sure. something that you need, I feel like, to be able to, you know, keep going is having that outside support um, from others like as well as yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Huge. I have one more thing. 
and Yay. it's a little bit longer. I'm hoping it won't be too long because we're already at 45 minutes. I don't know how we do this. We're like, hey, I don't, we don't know have much today, but we talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really excited about this one. I saved it best for last. Um, and this is habit stacking. Have you heard of habit stacking? I have a little bit, but I tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, I looked this up before because I wanted to make sure I was saying it right. And I wasn't in my brain. I was okay. calling something habit stacking that I don't think was, but I did pull a definition. So I want to read it to you guys. This is from jamesclear.com. And I guess James Clear is the author of the book Atomic Habits, which I've okay. not read, but it's very famous. I've heard of it a million times. I think I, mm-hmm. I think Angela owns it, so I probably should read it. But from this website, it says habit stacking is a special form of implementation intention. Rather than pairing your new habit with a particular time or location, you pair it with a current habit. So for there's some examples from his website that I think are really good. So the habit stacking formula is after or before current habit, I will new habit. After I pour my cup of coffee each morning, I will meditate for one minute. After I take my shoes off from work, I will immediately change into my workout clothes. After I sit down to dinner, I'll say one thing I'm grateful for that happened today. Or after I get into bed at night, I'll give my partner a kiss. And he says that the reason this habit stacking works so well is that your current habits are already built into your brain, right? You have patterns and behaviors that have been strengthened over years and years and years of your life. So by linking your new habits to a cycle that's already built into your brain, you'll make it more likely to actually stick to the new behavior. So I feel like, first of all, that makes perfect sense to me. Like, duh. Yeah. Why have I never thought of this before? But I also, what I thought habit stacking was, I'll just say right now, is I thought habit stacking meant doing something you want to do while doing something you have to do. I don't know what that's called, but I also use that. So I'll tell you guys how I use both of them. Um, For instance, whenever I go to do the laundry, I watch a YouTube video. If I do the laundry without doing that, I like cannot for some reason, but I've paired that together in my brain. I'm like, okay, if you're going to go fold laundry, like you can set up your phone on the dryer and like watch a YouTube video while you're doing it to get it done. And that totally helps me be more likely to get my laundry done because I hate laundry, bane of my (laughs) existence. In my house, we have this thing called the laundry strike. And if you haven't seen your clothes in two weeks, it's because Erica's on strike. But (laughs) I um, love to pair it with something fun. But I also thought that this habit stocking made a lot of sense. And this is where my 10 day challenge comes back around okay unintentionally habit stacked without even knowing what it was called or what it was but I told myself like okay you're already in the bathroom in the morning when you brush your teeth so before you brush your teeth you're going to do your skincare I'm not allowed to brush my teeth until I do my skincare and I'm definitely going to brush my teeth because I have rank morning breath so (laughs) that's kind of how I habit stacked that and I have not like skipped a day of doing my skincare since I started doing it that way so I I guess habit stacking works for me really well. I had no idea. Um, Another example is since yesterday. So we'll see how this sticks. But since yesterday, when I got the Invisalign, I found that I'm not allowed to like literally drink coffee without taking them out. And you're only allowed to have them out for a total of two hours a day. So my new routine is, at least I tried it this morning and it worked well, is when I have my morning cup of coffee, I'll also eat my gummy vitamins so that they're out of my teeth. And then I'll put them back in and I don't eat anything else except water until lunch. And then I don't eat anything else except water until dinner. And that's been working really well. So now I have a way that my vitamins fit into my teeth routine, which sounds really silly to have a teeth routine, but you know. (laughs) So all that to say that I feel like habit stacking worked really well for me. And I just wanted to like say what it is and recommend it. If anyone's having trouble sticking things together, this has really done it for me. Same thing at night. This is a super random one, but Angelo and I do Duolingo every single day and we have like 500 day streaks now. Like we've been doing it for so long and I really started to... I guess resent it. I'm like, this sucks. I don't know why I'm doing this. I feel like I can't even speak Spanish that well. Like this feels dumb. And what I started doing was I also hate brushing my teeth for the record, which now I have to do a lot, which sucks. But at night when I turn my toothbrush on and it has a two minute timer, I do my Duolingo at the same time. I'm brushing my teeth and then in my left hand is my phone and I'm just tapping the words and learning Spanish. And for some reason, like I don't hate doing Spanish anymore. So I highly recommend um, habit stacking if y'all have never tried it. And I found great success in it somehow. I think it really makes a lot of sense and it it just works for me. 
Yeah, I think that when you were explaining like the definition to me, I yeah. think that I just subconsciously do that. Yeah. Because a lot of times like I, I like giving myself mini goals and I think that I Ooh, relate I that. habits I think I relate habit stacking back to my mini goals a lot because I'm like, oh, when I get home I have to do this and once I'm done with that I can do this. And yeah. I feel like that's kinda like how I set up my mini goals. So like for example mm-hmm. today I knew that I needed to sign the lease, but I had to do like stuff for charge before. So I, yeah. Kyle texted me. He said, we need to sign the lease today. I said, okay, I have to do charge stuff as soon as I get home. So I got mm-hmm. home. I immediately grabbed my laptop. I sat on the cra- couch. I did my like charge stuff. It only took me like 30 minutes. And then I looked at him and I said, right. okay, grab your laptop. We're going to sign the lease. And That's kind of perfect uh, combo there of the habit stacking, the mini goals and the accountability partner. Yes. You pulled them all together. <laughs> I did without even knowing it. <laughs> but I I find in my own life, in my own day, and like, of course, this isn't going to work for everybody. But if yeah. I give myself like these mini goals, if I'm like, okay, I need to get this done by three so that I can do this thing by four. Mm-hmm. And I think that that really helps me. And it just like, it kind of plans my day a little bit easier too. Because if I'm like, I have to get this all done by 8 p.m., I'm never going to do it all because right. I feel like... I mean, I'm not diagnosed with ADHD, but I've heard a lot of people that have ADHD Mm -hmm. say, like, if I write down all of these things that need to get done, I'm never going to get them all done because it's too big of a list to think of at first. And so, I mean, I can definitely make a list and get through all of it. But if I give myself these mini goals and I'm like, okay, I have to have these two things accomplished before I can even start this one. That means I have to start with these. And then one of my mini goals is completed. I've completed those two things so that I can move on to the next. I really like that. And it sounds like I could be wrong, but in a way, it almost sounds like you're time blocking without even calling it time yeah. blocking. But it's yeah. like, I have to get this done by three so that I can get this done by four. And what I found is the problem, like, now I'm going to go on a time blocking tangent, just to put that out there. <laughs> but what I've found is I've actually tried time blocking as well, and I didn't include it in my list. And that's because, well, first of all, when I was doing that, I was calling it time blocking I was putting blocks in my calendar and I was being very structured about it just like Mm -hmm. I did with the 10-day challenge and it made it so hard on me but also what I didn't take into account that I've heard a lot of people who do time blocking successfully say is they say you have to build in breaks and without Mm -hmm. realizing it I totally do that throughout my regular life like not only do I do small rewards I do breaks like Sometimes during a work day, I'm stressed as hell and I've been sitting there stressed for five hours without even realizing it. And I'm like, whoa, we need to hold up. So I will literally go lay on my bed and take a five, 10, 15 minute break and play games on my phone. Like, and that yeah. is something that completely is so like dull to my brain that it resets me. And then I'm able to walk back in the office, sit down and get my stuff done probably a lot faster than I would have if I just like sat there all day. So I feel like yeah. that was kind of a random tangent, but um, it's important to like take breaks in between doing habit stacking, in between time blocking, in between mini goals, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. like going back to the beginning of what we said before we started all of this is just listen to your body and like don't stress yourself out too much. Like building those breaks, building those reward systems. And I feel like that will put you on the right track to getting your habits and routines in place that you want to better your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the main point that we started out with all of this is just do things that make you happy, that make you genuinely happy. (laughs) Do what makes you feel good, period. Absolutely. Well, now that we're coming to the end, I know, now that we're coming to the end, what are, I know that we kind of shared like some of our like habits or stuff already, but do you have any like big habits that are your like tried and true? Like I always do these things. Yeah, it's a good question. I feel like my answer is kind of no, mostly because I sprinkled mine throughout the episode and told you guys like yeah. I do my skincare every day. I eat my vitamins and I have my coffee. And then in the end of the day, like I do my night skincare routine. I brush my teeth and I do my Spanish and that's pretty much it. I don't have any big ones, but do you? Um, I feel like my biggest one is like my meal prepping and I wouldn't call it a super structured meal planning. I basically Mm -hmm. just make something on Sunday that I can eat for lunch for four or five days because sometimes I'm like, oh, well, this isn't going to last me all the way till Friday. And then (laughs) I give myself a little reward of ordering lunch at work one day. But Ordering food is a great reward, by the way. I love that. Absolutely. 
But I that's like my biggest one that I think that I do every week as I always go or maybe I don't go to the grocery store, but I have enough food to like make meals for two weeks in a row. And on Sunday, mm-hmm. I always make lunch for the week. That's my biggest yeah. one for sure. That's a great like um, routine that you have. And I feel like when you do that on Sunday, you are like seriously setting your future self up for success. And that's kind of like, I guess the point of all of this is like setting your future self up for success or your current self. It just feels good to know that you're covered. It's like, okay, I don't Mm -hmm. have to worry about lunch. It's done. And I love things like that. Yeah, because what am I going to do? Make it at 7 p.m. the night before? No, I want to watch my show and go to bed. (laughs) Or 3 a.m. in the morning because you have to get up so early for work. It's like, that's not going to work. We have to figure something out. I've been talking to some of my friends because uh, me and my friend Owen, we moved to first shift a week apart from each other. And mm-hmm. she like runs into work with like a whole loaf of bread and like peanut butter and jelly. And I was like, oh Owen, gosh, yeah. I'm telling you, you got to make your lunch at like, least the night it, before. <laughs> and she was like, I know, I know. I'm trying to get better at it. So Owen, if you're listening, this is all for you. <laughs> Owen, you need Marissa as your accountability partner. You guys yeah. could do it together. <laughs> like that would be cute. Like one if there's thing even that, a way you could go to each other's houses and like help each other, that mm-hmm. would be cute. Yeah. One thing about me and Owen is that we always make this joke. We were on second shift together. She moved to first shift a week after me. We call each other codependent like besties. Like we That's say funny. that we're codependent on each other. We're not. It's okay. We just like <laughs> like me, no, Owen and Mara. That. Owen and Mara are roommates and okay. we just like we all like hang out all the time and we do like everything together they were my first friends at my job Aww. so we like call each other codependent because like we're each other's like three like yes. best friends in the area that's so cute I actually love that I call myself codependent all the time it's okay I don't think I am <laughs> but maybe I am I don't know yeah I, like, it's not a serious dig at ourselves right. it's just a funny one it's fun <laughs> I know I'm like I never want to leave Angela I'm like why can I not do anything without you am I like literally codependent I like don't want to <laughs> <laughs> but why yeah. do you want to when you have such good people in your life you know exactly all right Owen. if you're listening this is this is your serious shout out you got this girl <laughs> implement some new habits and routines <laughs> she no. wants to come on the podcast so i'm oh trying to gosh. find one that she could like that would make sense. there would be like a good topic mm-hmm. for her yeah i i have some friends too that i'm like you are so inspirational like we need to interview you and like talk yeah. about your life it's so fun so yeah definitely if you're listening to this and that sounds interesting to you let us know if you want us to bring on some guests we can totally do that we know so many cool people in our lives and you know I will do everything in my power to try to get the boys on here I know Angelo will be an easy feat but I know Kyle will not so yeah Kyle's out there watching the masters he likes golf yeah true I forgot I didn't Uh, even realize it was golf season right now but I guess it is I guess I don't know ramping up so yeah I hope you all enjoyed listening to this though I know it was like in a way it felt jumbled but in another way it didn't like I think everything yeah. kind of really flowed together and we have a lot of ways that we implemented habits and routines into our lives that like without this episode I would have never put it into words but since mm-hmm. we did I feel like it makes so much sense I'm like oh of course I was habit stacking and using accountability partners I just didn't put a word on it and did it subconsciously yeah and I love that you like came with the words because I was like I know what I do but then you said like habit stacking and I was like oh I, I do like, that oh, that's and exactly you were like it. yeah accountability partner I'm like I, I kind of knew that I did that like I just like asked people to like keep me accountable but like it yeah. was weird to like hear the words behind it and I'm like oh yeah that's that's what I do that's what it's called <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. No, I felt like that too because I felt the same way as you I had all my stuff together and I was like this is what I do but like how do I tell other people like, I don't know yeah. how to put it into words so I just kind of googled it and that's where we ended up so like I said I hope you all enjoyed this and that you might use some of these you know tips to implement your own habits and routines definitely let us know if you do comment on Instagram and I think that's pretty much it make sure that's to it. rate review and follow our podcast and we will see you guys on next Wednesday so with that yeah. I'm Erica I'm Marissa and, and we, we run, run on coffee, coffee. Bye. See you next week.